Welcome back to another edition of City Currents. I'm your host, Russell Carter, and joining me is Crystal Pinchback, our intern. Uh, Crystal, it's it's your last show. Uh, it so is. A little sad? Yeah, a little bit of sweet, a bit of sweet. Uh, Crystal's been with us the last couple of months doing her internship. She's an Averitt student and has done a wonderful job helping in the communications department. Uh, she's made some flyers, she's done some shows, she's filmed some tours. Uh, Crystal, I guess what's, what's been your favorite thing that you've done this go around? Well, my favorite thing has been this City Current show because this is what I want to do. So being able to work with all you guys and really honing in on my skills and improving has been the most beneficial for me here. So I really appreciate it. Great. Uh, so, I guess what are your plans now? What's, what's next? Well, I have an internship starting next week, so that's going to be at 104.5, and then I'm going to go into my senior year at Averitt, which I'm really excited about. Now, you, you want to do this for a living, right? I do. I do. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Okay, well, I really didn't know that I wanted to be a communications student starting at Averitt. I was a business student. We're not going to talk about that. But when I switched over to communications, it really felt right. And I've always been very interested in pop culture, news. I watch Good Morning America every day. And I really love how you can really engage someone through the camera to make them feel like they're sitting at your living room table. Okay, great. Uh, Crystal, thank you so much. We've, we've had a great time. Uh, we'll we'll uh, do this last show, and then mm -hmm. we'll, we'll cry afterwards. Yes, we will. Uh, so, folks, it's uh, summer's winding up. We're, we're here in August. And... Uh, yeah, it's coming to a close. Actually, schools started early, so uh, we're getting our fall programs out. Our brochures will be out soon. Uh, you can get all of our information of our fall programming on uh, playdanvilleva.com. You can also pick up a brochure. We have boxes out on the trails. Uh, you can download a brochure online. Uh, but one of the big things about fall, uh, you can't have fall without football. So we're going to take a quick break, and uh, when we come back, Justin Price from Sports and Athletics will be joining me. And uh, we'll, we'll get you guys what's going on, uh, how to sign up for football, who's eligible, uh, what ages we have, and all that. So stay with us, and, and we'll be right back. Sparky the Fire Dog here. Make sure your family has a fire escape plan, and they practice it twice a year. One important thing to practice is get low and go. Get low and go? If you see or smell smoke, it's important to get low and go. You guys ready to practice? Yeah! Let's give it a try. Smoke rises, so you want to make sure you get low under the smoke, or you'll find that the air is safer to breathe. Great job, guys. Protect your family from fire. For more information, visit sparky.org. Uh, welcome back, and like I said, uh, it's football season. Uh, absolutely my favorite time of year. I love football. I love the fall. Uh, joining me is Justin. I don't love him as much. <laughs> Uh, but Justin, let's talk a little bit about football and uh, let's talk a little bit about sports. What you guys got coming up? Uh, we got our football leagues coming up. We have our Optimus Football League, which is our Tackle Football League, and we also have our Flag Football League coming uh, up. Great. And uh, now, for you folks at home, uh, Optimus is the, the sponsor, the Optimus mm -hmm. Club, the sponsor of the league. Uh, but this is, again, it's, it's a real football league. We, we play football. We play downs and touchdowns yep. and everything, right? So, yeah, that's correct. All right, Justin, so like you said, it's it's flag football all the way through tackle. So tell us a little bit about the ages. <clears throat> our flag football is 5 to 10-year-olds. We have three different divisions in our tackle league, which is uh, Mighty Might, Pee Wee, and Midget divisions. Our Mighty Might's 7, 8, and 9. Our Pee Wee's are 9, 10, 11. And our Midgets are going to be 11, 12, and 13-year-olds. Now, uh, football, of course, everybody's a little concerned with safety. Um, and that's kind of why we have the breakdown of divisions. We, uh, obviously safety is our biggest concern. Uh, we don't want anybody getting hurt. Uh, I know there's a lot going on now with concussions and people worried. Uh, what are some of the things that you guys do to, to take those precautions? Um, first, we had this year uh, something a little different that I've uh, worked with the GW coaches um, to kind of talk with our coaches. We had, a, we had a coaches clinic on the 21st of July. All of our coaches showed up. Um, we had uh, Nick, um, Anderson with the uh, GW head football coach and his coaching staff kind of go through you know the proper way to tackle because um, that's the main thing is the heads up tackling. Um, kids really get hurt and the main reason is of improper tackling. Um, head, a lot of head injuries come from it. So we had a good time with them. They had different coordinators go through different things so it was a really good time. Also we had the pros and Joes camp which is the heads up tackling. We had some coaches go out to that. Um, we had our kids go out to it. Um, Buddy Curry, with I think he played for the Atlanta Falcons. Um, he was out there kind of running the camp. But overall, that's what that's some things we did this year, and uh, I think it's really going to help our league. Now, one of the big thing, things that we've done every year, and uh, to explain the process a little bit to you folks at home if you haven't been through it, 
uh, when you when you register, you go to the Squire Rec, and uh, we actually do a weigh-in. And, and the purpose of that is to make sure that you know large-sized kids aren't tackling or hitting smaller-sized kids. Uh, so that's some of the things that we do. Yeah, as well, and that's, correct? that's that's correct. We weigh in, and certain people can play certain positions because of their weight. So that way, we kind of we're not have the smallest kid running the ball and he's going to get tackled by somebody that's 10 times his size. So yeah, um, we, we do the weigh-ins and we make sure everybody's in the proper weight and things of that sort. Now let's talk a little bit about equipment. Now we have regulation, it's been certified equipment, mm -hmm. correct? That's correct. Well, that's correct. We had some new equipment come in just recently. It's been certified um, and it's ready to go. Uh, and, and again, sign-ups sign are going on now. Tell us a little bit about uh, sign-ups, where they can go, how much it is. We have all the information at Squire Recreation Center. Uh, we have all the sign-up sheets, everything that you need. Um, if you haven't played with us before, make sure you bring your birth certificate. We have to have that city file, that state file number on file. Um, if you have signed up before, come and sign up with the sign-up sheets. You can call us at 799-5214. It's $35 for our tackle league and it is $25 for our flag league. If you're a non-city resident, it's an extra $12.50 for those um, additional under those fees. Now, uh, coaches, you also need coaches. Yes, too. we're always in need of coaches. Anybody that's interested in coaching, come by Squire Recreation Center. We have our coaches' applications ready to go. And now, if, if you miss the coaches' clinic, uh, we certainly can make ways to make sure you Yes, we, we, uh, we've talked with Nick Anderson. We, we've been to the heads up football camp, we know some things that can help you and we'll get them, we'll get them caught up on it. Great. Now, Justin, um, I'm, I'm real excited again at football season. There's nothing better than going to the park and seeing a bunch of kids playing football. Uh, but we also do cheerleading as well, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, so, if, at what stage is on that? It's 5 to 13. Okay, so if you have a, a, a daughter, 5 to 13, uh, she's considerably loud, like screaming in the house, you want to get her out, uh, bring her down, sign her up, and they cheer during the games for the the, the boys, is that correct? That's correct. They, uh, they'll have a cheerleading class with their, uh, their coach, who is Keisha Hunter. She'll have a class. They'll learn routines and throughout the week and things of that sort. And then throughout the week, they'll decide what games they want to come cheer at, and they'll come cheer for them. Okay. And again, uh, sign-ups are also at Squire <laughs> Recreation for your cheerleaders as well. Uh, Justin, thank you so much uh, for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Thank you. I uh, look forward to a, a great season. Anything you'd like to add? Let's play some football. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll take a quick break. and we'll be right back. Joe, I'm just checking to see if you've registered with the Selective Service now that you've turned 18. Great. Oh, oh, what about you? Don't worry, women don't have to register. Well, here are the reasons. Federal law specifically states that only men have to register with Selective Service, and the Supreme Court has upheld the law. But there is an important job you can do. You can make sure that your boyfriend and all the other guys you know remember to register with Selective Service. It's important. Registration is tied to eligibilities for school loans, jobs, and training programs. Guys can register online when they turn 18. They can even submit early registration information online after age 17 years and 3 months. And when they turn 18, they'll be automatically registered. Guys, go to www.sss.gov and register or pick up a Selective Service registration form at the post office. Welcome back, and joining us is Kara Hughes, who is a fellow intern. Kara, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I am great. Now tell us a little bit about your internship so far. Well, it's been a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. I've been working at Stonewall Therapeutic Center, mm -hmm. and I've been working with the children, teens, and adults with disabilities, doing camp, doing special events, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. It's been great. Cool. So tell us about a couple of the projects that you've worked on. Well, the main two projects that I worked on was mm -hmm. Push America and our Back to School End of Summer event. Mm -hmm. And Push America was July 28th. We had 36 cyclists from mm -hmm. Push America, their Journey of Hope, mm -hmm. which is when they cycle across the United States. And they came to Stonewall Therapeutic Center. They had lunch. We gave them a warm welcome. Mm -hmm. And then we also went to the Danville Braves game with them. They're a nonprofit organization that serves people with disabilities, and they help other organizations who serve people with impairments. Mm -hmm. So we wrote a grant to them to help us with our end of summer back to school celebration. And that was on August 2nd. It was from 11 to 3. We had bounce houses, crafts, mm -hmm. games. We had a water slide. We had a DJ playing mm -hmm. music upstairs and food. It was just a great time. And it was sponsored by Danville Regional Medical Center, Kmart, Walmart, CVS, Sam's, Walgreens, 
Chick-fil-A, Marshalls, and Office Plus. Wow. And what we did with that was we filled backpacks with school supplies, and we gave it to our children and teens that are school age so that they could take them back to school with them. And it was just great to see the look on their face when oh, they got yeah. those backpacks. Yeah. They were really, really excited. So we really appreciate all of the support from the community in helping us do that. That sounds really cool. I know you guys had like a great time there. Oh, yeah. And it seems like your summer has been so busy. Mm -hmm. But we just wanted to thank you so much for joining us here on City Currents. And good luck with the rest of your internship. Thank you very much. Okay. So you guys stay tuned because next up we have Shanette Jenkins who handles all of our out of school programming. Welcome back and joining us is Jeanette Jenkins who handles all of our out of school programming. Jeanette, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm fine. Now, last time we spoke about the summer camps mm -hmm. and different programs that you guys offered, mm -hmm. but now it's time to go back to school. It is time to go back to school. So could you tell us a little bit about your after school programming? I sure will. We have our after school kids program. Um, we have a site at Coates Recreation Center mm -hmm. and we have a site at Forest Hills Elementary School. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at starting, um, we have before school mm -hmm. at Gibson elementary and so um, the sites that we pick up from for Coates is Gibson we pick up from Schoolfield and Park Ave and we're also looking at picking up from Woodbury and Johnson as well okay now um, is there a cost for these programs of course um, it's $55 a week okay. or $35 for three days mm -hmm. and our daily rate is $15 a day and that includes snack and any field trips that we may take um, during the school week. So, what can the kids expect this year with after school programming? They can expect a lot. You know, um, we will continue on with our foreign language classes mm -hmm. through Sir Language. Mm -hmm. We're um, implementing our healthy eating and physical activity standards this year. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but uh, First Lady Obama, she um, incorporated some. Well, we call it HEPA. Okay. But it's healthy eating and physical activity standards. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be implementing that starting with our after school program. And basically, they're just, um, we're going to be offering healthier snacks. They'll be doing more physical activity. They're required mm -hmm. to do, it's required that they do 60 minutes oh. a day. Um, 30 minutes for after school mm. and so we actually have someone on board on our staff who will be doing specialized physical activity with the kids once a week mm. and then we'll also um, be doing a gardening program mm. you know um, the Stonewall has community gardens mm. and so our after school program will be picking up a couple of boxes and growing some plants and that will be part of you know the healthy eating aspect of it as well so we'll be doing a lot along with you know the in-town field trips like bowling skating you know, things like that. So it's going to be fun. And we also do homework. Um, we have time set aside for homework. So, you know, we do a lot. <laughs> it sounds like you guys do a lot. And I really love that gardening thing. I know for Day to Engage, we had to do gardening at mm -hmm. the Boys and Girls Club. So that really helps to not only get out in the community, but it helps with that physical activity throughout the day as well. Yeah, and, it, and it, you know, I like to open them up to do things that they may not experience at home. And so anything new, that would be for them it's you know it's good to get them engaged in and I think you know gardening you know my thumb is purple ah. you know, but through cooperative extension it's yeah. becoming green okay <laughs> <laughs> so you know and I you know we're just doing something different with the kids mm -hmm. try to incorporate a little more each year okay. um, with the after school program. Now, where can the students sign up for these programs? There's a number of places they can sign up on our website mm -hmm. um, we have registration, they can sign up and pay on the website. They can come down to the main office, which is located at the city auditorium, mm -hmm. to pick up a registration packet and they can also pick it up from Coates Recreation Center. Okay, well, Jeanette, thank you so much for joining us and we'll be back after this. If you want a brighter future, you have to have a spark. In the Dan River region, we see education not just as a spark, but as a beacon, a light that guides our children from the playground to the graduation stage and beyond. We breathe life back into the region. We ride 
to victory. We soar to new heights. We invest in our children. We invest in success. We invest in the future. All right, we're out here at Stonewall Recreation Center. Joining me is Jason Buchheimer, Division Director of Community Rec. Now, Jason, this segment we want to talk about some things that we've done to our centers recently and some plans that we have to upgrade them. Uh, behind us now is an uh, interesting-looking play structure. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, the, the playground that used to be here was getting a little old and uh, needed to be updated, so we actually looked into some newer play structures, um, and this is actually a new, innovative way to get kids to use their imagination to play more instead of versus you know a more structured slide and you know tunnels and you know kind of the traditional you know plastic molded playground that you have so when we started looking this was an option you know while it looks kind of you might say hey this this looks a little crazy a little dangerous these are actually engineered uh, to be very very safe the surfacing that's underneath of it is engineered to accept falls and you can literally fall from the top and not fall through this through, through the um, structure so it's really unique and it's something we thought would be different and you know why not put something different in instead of the same the same thing sure and as you can see there's uh there's getting plenty of use right now now uh at, at this site as well i understand that uh, we're trying to do something for the younger kids now right yes this piece right here is really made for uh, kids three to five plus um, it's for the, so the littler kids, it's a little harder for them to actually climb up on it. Um, while they do make um, play structures that are the same st same style, uh, we actually went with the more traditional. We, we uh, met with some of the community members and found out that they really were looking for something a little more traditional for their younger kids. So we're actually just adjacent to this site. Uh, um, this structure is still going to stay in place, but just adjacent to it over on the on the side will be a new structure that's actually coming within the next month. It'll be. Uh, be built by Virginia Playground Systems. Great. Now, like you said, that's that's for three to five uh, under that. Yeah, it's actually five and under. So it has zero level entry. Um, it has actually ADA accessibility um, as well. So it'll be used as well by um, our therapeutic populations um, and our younger groups. Okay, great. Now, then that's the stuff that we've done outside. Uh, we're actually going to go inside now and check out some of the great things that are happening inside Stonewall. Uh, this is one of our actually prettiest facilities and some of the newest upgrades we have. So let's check it out. All right, we're now inside in uh, Stonewall Rec. And Jason, uh, this is kind of a multi-purpose room. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's happened here in the last year. Well, the, the downstairs facility has received quite a few upgrades. Um, almost a year ago, we started on the bathroom. So the bathroom's actually got a full renovation and changeover and got them to be uh, ADA accessible as well. Um, so they got a complete full, full renovation there. And then we came in, as you can see, um, we laid in an, a very nice new floor. It's actually uh, was recommended as to by the manufacturer. Um, it looks like a hardwood um, floor, like a hardwood laminate floor, but it's actually a rubber laminate floor. Um, so it's a lot more receptive to when you know, kids are in here running around or they're playing games and activities. If somebody falls down, it's a little more um, helpful for them. Um, and then to, to, to go along with the floor, we wanted to kind of brighten up the facility a little bit. So we came in, we got the whole facility repainted, um, made sure that everything was cleaned up. Um, and now we kind of uh, enjoy the space because it looks a lot brighter. Um, people come in, um, it's a whole lot more cleaner. And um, you know, people have been very receptive to the to the upgrades we made so far. Great. So that's a little bit uh, Stonewall outside and Stonewall downstairs. Now we're going to go upstairs and talk to Charlene about what's going on upstairs at Stonewall. All right. So we've made our way upstairs in Stonewall, and joining me is Charlene Presley, a program coordinator with uh, Therapeutic Recreation. Uh, Charlene, uh, this is a beautiful space. I don't think a lot of people have ever been in here, uh, and we just wanted to highlight a little bit. Tell us a little bit about this area. Okay, this is our common area where almost anything happens. Um, we do arts and crafts in here, we do a variety of our programs in here, and it's just a large space that it's not only one purpose, it's a multi-purpose room. Um, we also have rentals here, so this is a big area where rentals are held for their dinners or what type of rental it's going to be. Sure, and let's talk about that a little bit. Now, the area downstairs as well as the area upstairs can be rented, and they're, they're rented separately. 
Um, now they call you for that, is that correct? Correct. They call me and we arrange it up here and we get all the paperwork done. So it doesn't take very long. Just come on in and we'll get you set. And what's that number? The number is 434-799-5199. All right, and uh, along with that rental is one of one of the best kept secrets in Danville. Is we have a beautiful, full functioning kitchen. Uh, so let's uh, let's check that out real quick. All right, so uh, Charlene, we are in uh, this beautiful kitchen here at Stonewall. Tell us a little bit about just what's in here. This kitchen is great. It is a commercial grade kitchen. So any restaurant, if we were doing a program with a restaurant, they could come in here because we have a commercial grade. Um, right behind us, we have a convection oven, several shelves in there that we can warm the food up in there, keep it warm before your rental or even when we're doing programs. So it's great. It cooks your food a whole lot faster than your standard oven. So that's really nice when you have a program that's short but you need to get it done and it can get done quickly. Um, behind us over here we have a six burner range and an oven that has two shelves in it so things can be warmed in there too. And when we're doing programs it helps out a lot if we're cooking a lot or having a lot of things on the stove with the six burners on the stove. It really helps out a lot. And also within our kitchen when you rent the building there's an ice machine that's available and we have microwave and we have a variety of tables in here that will help you with your serving needs and your prep time in the kitchen. And um, we also have a very nice commercial grade refrigerator that is very large. So if you need to store things in there, there's plenty of space in there for that. Sure, and let's just so the folks at home, just to give an example, what are some things that uh, you have done or programs that you've held in this kitchen? Okay, in the fall we had made homemade <laughs> apple butter. Individuals were able to learn how to make it and to can it. Okay. So um, that was a program that we did in the fall. We have also done healthy cooking classes here in the kitchen, um, baking and just basic recipes that kids can do and adults can do at home. Um, basically any type of cooking class we have done in here. All right, and again, folks, uh, if you've never been to Stonewall, it's a beautiful facility. It's on 119 Bradley Road. Uh, basically, if you just head straight up North Main, it's on the right. Can't miss it. Um, it's, it's a beautiful facility. There's a lot going on here. Charlene has a lot of great programs, uh, and, and as well as they have a lot of great programs downstairs. Charlene, thank you so much for, for being with us and uh, showing us your facility. Thank you so much. Now, Crystal, I understand that uh, you spent a little bit of time with Brian Price and doing some, some health and wellness stuff. I did. I talked to Chelsea Weber, which is the instructor for our new movement classes coming here. And also I spoke to Brian as well. And the movement class just helps you to move better. They do different movement techniques to help you feel better, move better, and live a healthier lifestyle. Okay, great. That sounds real exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a class that's getting ready to start. Uh, all the information, uh, again, will be on our website, playdamoVA.com, also in our brochure. So, Crystal, let's. Uh, I'm interested to see what what movement class yeah. is. Let's go. Uh, let's check it out. Let's check it out. Hi, guys. We're here at the Pepsi Building, and I'm here with Brian Price, who is the Health and Wellness Coordinator. Brian, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Crystal. How are you? I am great. Now, I know that Parks and Rec is partnering with Connective Healing. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, in our health and wellness offerings, we're trying to offer things that are holistic, uh, things that are a little bit outside of the box, not your everyday type of uh, program. And we have come upon this partnership with Connective Healing that will give people an opportunity to learn more about their movement and learn how their movement can affect everything they do from weightlifting to walking to running, whether you are a beginner or a seasoned athlete. This class will be something that's for you. Perfect. So when are these movement classes coming to us? We're going to have free classes in the month of August mm -hmm. on August 21st, which is a Thursday. Mm -hmm. We'll have one class at 11, one class at 530. Then starting September 11th, mm -hmm. the classes will start here at the Pepsi building, mm -hmm. 530 p.m., $5 per class. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us on City Currents. And next, we're going to talk to Chelsea Weber, who is our instructor. Joining us now is the woman behind it all, Chelsea Weber, who is going to be our movement class instructor. Ms. Chelsea, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Perfect. So could you tell us a little bit about your class? Yes, I lead a group movement class that lasts about an hour, and every participant comes from that class feeling a sense of improved flexibility, coordination, strength, and ability, no matter what their goals in life are. 
So that's perfect. So coming to your class, what do you want your students to take away from that class? Really, this class can boost a level of health for anybody who's a beginner or has an injury even, but it's a really excellent class for fitness fanatics. It can boost their strength and their power, and everybody's quality of life is improved after a movement class. Well, Ms. Chelsea, thank you so much for joining us on City Currents. Now stay tuned because next we're going to get a glimpse inside that movement class. So now I'm going to give an example of a movement lesson. And in just a short couple of minutes, I'm going to remind you of the power of your brain and show you that movement therapy will unlock possibilities for movement that you had forgotten were there. So I want everybody to lean over as if to touch your toes. But don't force it, only go as far as what is easy. Now stand back up and go over to your chair Leaning your hands on the back of the chair, you're going to have your knees bent slightly. And this whole movement lesson, you're going to be moving very slowly and gently. I want you to pull in your belly and look down towards your belly button, rounding your back. Look as if there's something interesting at your belly button. Now straighten up slowly, pushing out your belly button, and letting your eyes come up to the horizon, still leaning on the chair the whole time and moving slowly. Again, come back down, pulling in your belly button and rounding your back. And then slowly coming up, pushing out your belly and arching your back. Make sure you're leaning on your chair the whole time. And the next time you come down, Pull in your belly and look slightly underneath your left armpit. Now push out your belly and look over your left shoulder. The next time you pull in your belly, come down to look underneath your right armpit. And then as you push out your belly and arch your back, look over the right shoulder. Now slowly come back to a neutral position in the middle and let go of your chair. Step over to the side and check where your toes are now. Bend over and see if it has changed at all. And stand back up. Did anybody feel the difference? So why was this different from forcing the movement to touch your toes? Movement therapy offers a different way of thinking about your movement. Moving slowly and gently actually is a way to awaken your brain to new possibilities of moving. You moved with attention, which is really the best way to learn anything. And I freed you from the goal of trying to reach your toes and helped you find another way to get there that was easier and quicker. Uh, Crystal, thank you so much for all your hard work over the summer, uh, and we're sad to see you go. Oh. Uh, but we wish you the best of luck. you have everything you'd like to say? Well, I just wanted to thank everybody for this opportunity and make sure that you really come out to all of our parks and rec things. We have healthy eating, we have dance classes, anything that you're interested in. We just want you to keep moving. So just keep moving and have fun and play Danville VA. That was a great send off. Uh, we, we will pay her later for those comments. Again, thanks so much and uh, we will see you all next episode. Thank you.